In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. You left my phone over there. That's all right. I remember what it was. I was going to quote from it. I was not going to make a telephone call during the sermon. I wasn't expecting a call. I don't need it. It's all right. The Gospel, according to St. Matthew, in the 18th chapter, Peter came unto Jesus and he said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? As many as seven times, because Lord, that would be an awful lot. Wouldn't it be an awful lot? Seven times? I mean, even three or four would be a lot for me to forgive. Because, come on now. And what does he say? I say not seven times, but until seventy times seven. Any commentary that you read is going to tell you, and it's common sense, that our Lord is not saying that you keep count, and when you reach 490, you say, okay, he's done. He's toast, I'm unfriending him, and that's all there is to it. You know, 489, I can but not 400. That's just unreal. That's not the point. There is a deeper point. And then he gives that point, of course, by way of an example. And when he gives this example, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like. He doesn't just say, your forgiveness in this world should be like this. But the kingdom of heaven is like this. That is, your eternal life and your expectation of eternal life with God is like this. I'm going to change it a little bit, but there's not much to be changed about it, really. Um, maybe I'll go on. There was a king who took account of his servants, and there was one brought unto him who owed him, say, a hundred thousand dollars. He didn't have a hundred thousand dollars in easy cash, liquid cash, to pay him or anywhere. And so the king said, Well, we'll put a lien on this and put a lien on that, and we'll take everything you have, and I'll get my hundred thousand dollars or as much of it as I can, and you know, whatever's Whatever that breaks in your life, you know, you lose your your uh, your property, lose your home, your your wife and your family leave you, or whatever. That's your problem because you had many many opportunities to pay me, and I saw that boat that you bought, and I saw these other things, these trips you were taking, but you didn't pay me back anything. So too bad. And he falls down on his knees, on his knees in the man's office, and he says, "Please." Please don't do this to me. Give me some time. Have patience with me. I will pay you everything. And it's so pathetic. And the man is so moved. that he says, all right. All right. Take some time. It's all right. I won't do it. And the man goes out. And he finds someone who owes him $100. And he says, pay, pay me what you owe. And the man says, I just need a little more time and I'll get it. And this is obviously someone who, whom he knows on a different, in a different avenue of life, on a smaller scale of like $100,000 or $100, you know. And he says, no, pay me now. Or I'm going to have you arrested for fraud. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And he brings the full weight of the law to bear against the man and tries to ruin his life. Over a hundred dollars. When he should have been forgiven a hundred thousand dollars. Well, the other men who worked for this man who had forgiven him, they knew this. They couldn't believe it had happened. I mean, they come and they tell him this. 
And so he does everything that he had said he would do. And so it is with us. His Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant. Not just that was a bad idea, that was a bad decision. Thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldn't you have had compassion on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? And he was very, very angry and delivered him to the tormentors. He used to torment you if you were in debt until he should pay everything that was due. And he says, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. If we commit sin against God, adultery, murder, theft, grave sin, and we truly, truly repent, and we pray to God on our knees, begging him to forgive us, and we are truly honest about it, he will forgive us. He has the power to forgive us. He wants to forgive us. He wants us to live in everlasting, eternal joy in union with him, in eternity. But if we will not forgive someone else who is wronging us, then we're not serious about our own forgiveness either. We either accept forgiveness or we reject it, not just for us, but for others as well. We either accept the love of God or we reject it. Not just for us, but for those around us as well. For everyone we have anything to do with, we accept forgiveness and the love of God. That doesn't mean that when someone is maliciously harming us and is not repentant, or only pretends to repent that we have to be stupid. Jesus tells us to be as wise as serpents, but as innocent as doves. He doesn't tell us to be evil like serpents, but wise as serpents, cunning as serpents, but innocent as doves. And so we don't let people take advantage of us, but we do forgive them. Because we need to have hearts that are free from grudges. Hearts that are free from sitting there thinking what evil we would do to someone else who has done evil to us. And free from sitting there remembering the evil that's been done to us. We need to be free of it. It's not easy to do. And some people can reach a point where they just say, okay, I'm gonna let it go, then let it go. And that's good. Some people, it's necessary to let it go again and again until finally it recedes, it goes away because what's taking its place is forgiveness and love and thanksgiving to God. So, one of the things that I do before receiving Holy Communion as part of my preparation, when I'm usually when it's still alone, and I learned this from another priest who is actually an exorcist and does it before he does exorcisms, because it's necessary as part of spiritual combat, it is just a short little prayer. I forgive the following people, and I ask God to forgive them and then a list of the people who are taking up space in your mind without paying rent. <laughs> Those people. 
and list them and ask God to forgive them and announce to God you're forgiving them. That doesn't mean you don't need to forgive them again. Some people don't. Some people do. You will find out, right? But we have to do that. That's part of the work we do as Christians. Nobody said it would be easy. That's part of the fight that we wage as Christians because it's called spiritual warfare. It's warfare against demons who say, hey, you remember what so-and-so did to you that time? Aren't you angry? <laughs> because they do that. It's spiritual warfare and it's work. And it's the work of clearing the ground of polishing the mirror so that it reflects the light of God and of making space, as they say, clearing away the wreckage of, of the past, making space for the presence of Christ, that we may, by the power of the Holy Spirit, be eternally united to him and through him, united to the Father, for no man comes to the Father but through the Son, and united to the Holy Trinity, into eternity, because of God's great love for us, who would not have us sitting and withering away in misery and, and remembrance of insults, done, but coming into joy, eternally and infinitely. And to whom be glory forever, unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen.